everybody's been asking me, what's really under the pyramids of Giza? If true, the shape and form of the stuff underneath the pyramid might begin to explain a function, and that would be fantastic. I've often thought that the pyramids probably weren't just a burial chamber. Maybe there was some function. So today, join me in looking at one piece of evidence which I think will shine a light on what's underneath the pyramids of Giza from my knowledge. And that is, how did they find out what's underneath the pyramids? So I've read everything that is available from the Scotsman and the Italian who have come up with this press conference with this big announcement. They're yet to publish their paper. I think it comes out maybe early this week. So let's read it when it does come out. So the one thing that I can add to the story is my past research into synthetic aperture radar and imaging systems. They claim that they've used SAR, synthetic aperture radar from a satellite asset, to penetrate the Earth by over 2,000 feet. Well, that's not how synthetic aperture radar works. It might be a very vague byproduct. SAR is brilliant, and there is a commercial system as well as, of course, the military system, so it's possible that they did have access to it. And it lets you see through rain and cloud and fog and at night, and it will also take away tree cover to uh, give you very, very accurate measurements of altitude. That's how it works. If you take three synthetic aperture radars and shine it down onto the surface of the Earth, it will penetrate weather, foliage, and work at night, of course, and give you a very accurate measurement of anything that is above the ground. For example, the military can use it to see if the oleo struts on an airplane have lowered due to there being a bomb on board the plane. So it's very, very accurate, but it doesn't really penetrate the Earth. It's bouncing off the surface of the Earth. There is kind of evidence that you can use SAR for mineral research. It's very sensitive to certain magnetic resonances for metals. The story goes that if you have something of a known atomic mass, such as a belt, buckle from the US, you can find US service people on a battleground by dialing in the exact atomic mass of their belt buckle, so finding the trousers, so finding the person inside the trousers. That's what I hear. And also the story that Ayatollah Khamenei was given a very specific gravity ring, which you can look for anywhere in Iran. That's a bit of a tall order. But definitely a government agency such as the NRO can use satellite radar to measure things like car production in Korea. You can measure the specific gravity of a battery or a part of a car and you can count how many are coming out of the factory. So economic spying by SAR. But it doesn't really penetrate the earth. The one system that does penetrate the ground that you have seen on British television on Time Team a TV program I used to work on, use ground penetrating radar. It's like a lawnmower that you push over the ground and it will go through soil or sand in Egypt by about five to 10 feet. Possibly there's military grade ground penetrating radar that can go deeper, but certainly not down to 2000 feet. The only way I know to get details deep under the ground, thousands of feet, is to use a seismic system. What you can do is set off a charge poof, in a borehole surrounded by seismographs and the speed of the shock wave propagating from the explosion reaching the seismographs, you can join them all together and make some kind of vague picture of the underlying strata. You use it for oil exploration. It's a well-known system. But that brings me on to another point. Another program I've worked on in my history of television, there's a lot of films about Egypt, and the director of antiquities in Egypt is notoriously 
not very open to wacky theories and certainly not open to doing seismographic explosions underneath his pyramids. It's just not going to happen. All the more outlandish programs on Egypt use generic stock shots. You just don't get permission to do aliens in Egypt story. They find it very disrespectful to their ancestors, which I kind of agree. Uh, although they're interesting ideas, you just don't get permission from Cairo to go and do those programs. So I can't imagine how they actually did the survey under the pyramids of Giza, which are very, very special to Egyptians, of course. So what are these researchers saying about how they imaged this amazing find, you know, giant pillars with coily ropes and 2,000 feet and then chambers and then so... I mean, it's great. I love it. But how did they do it? Well, they are very vague. They cite synthetic aperture radar, which really doesn't look underground. Okay, they're not talking about doing the kind of seismic blast and seismographs uh, in a circle around the pyramids. They wouldn't get permission to do that anyway. But what they are saying is that they've got access to some kind of system that I don't even know exists on board some satellite they don't name that has an exotic kind of sensor. Why would they have access to it that can measure the vibrations of the Earth that can form a picture deep inside the Earth? Well, I don't think these two researchers have their own satellite program. And if it is on a satellite, tell us which satellite and what is the system that they're using. And I don't fully understand the vibration theory and to the level of visual detail that they're publishing. So that's my thoughts. I want it to be real. I want a real form and function more than a burial chamber to be uh, discovered about the big pyramids. I think they are still mysterious how they built them. Did they have a secret function? I mean, I think that would be really interesting to discover. Of course, if this is true and there's 2,000 foot multiple shafts on top of a secret underground chamber underneath that, it immediately would reveal that it wasn't built by the ancient Egyptians who didn't have the tools or the technology around at their age to build such a deep underground structure. Um, so that raises a whole other question of who built it. But what I and the world really should be waiting for is the details of how they did the imaging if and when they published their paper this week. Stay tuned, because the truth needs to be out there.